Good evening, everyone. My name is Trace. I'd like to welcome you to another stimulating debate. The question is this. Are there intelligently controlled extraterrestrial vehicles buzzing around the Earth and butting into people's business all the time? To get to the bottom of this and a number of other questions, we have called for two titans of the argument and response game. Please welcome Jen DeZura and Stanton Friedman. Stanton is a world-renowned UFO investigator and nuclear physicist, and perhaps the foremost expert on the shenanigans that went down in Roswell, New Mexico. His counterpart in this debate, Jen, is a two-time Virginia debate champ and the brainy babe primed to rebut Stanton's every contention. Jen and Stanton, are you prepared for this? Yes, we are. Let's let the argumentation begin. The evidence is overwhelming that planet Earth is being visited by intelligently controlled extraterrestrial spacecraft. Some UFOs, underline the some 36 times. One of the things that characterizes most of the attacks from the noisy negativists, as I call them, is they ignore the data. And they'll say there is no UFO evidence, but you never find any references to the evidence. Don't tell me there's nothing there. This is an enlargement of that. Anybody who's close to it really needs stuff. Let's look at the next slide. $100 million a year in 1958. Next slide. Let's look at the next one. The flying saucer, if you will. This is back in 57. In the next slide, you'll see a very exciting document. This is the enlargement of that. It's pretty neat. Next, next slide, slide, please. Next slide. This is the one I no worked on. Fusion, what goes on in phenomena. Next slide. Yes. We are being visited. There really are flying saucers, Virginia. Doesn't it make more sense that just some other nation or somebody somewhere on Earth has developed something that we arrogant Americans just aren't aware of? We got round vehicles that fly around high-speed airplanes that can stop dead, that can make right-angle turns and do it without noise, without visible external engines, without wings and without tails. We could build things that look like that, but not look like that and fly like that. If we could, we'd have used them in the, all the wars we've had in the last 50 years. So. If they weren't made here, then they had to be made someplace else. How come none of those aliens came during the medieval era? The sightings do go back to medieval times. I think they were checking us out and said, oh, these guys are still primitive. It's OK. If you look at uh, listings of all of the supposed UFO sightings, sure, there are a few dating back to ancient China, but we didn't start talking about them until about 1947. Wrong on both counts. The biggest study ever done for the United States government, unclassified at least, is Project Blue Book Special Report number 14, biggest study done for the Air Force. They look at 3,201 sightings. The report itself was not distributed. The press release was, to say the least, misleading. The government is made up of a bunch of jerks who lie to us. I'm going to have to concur. <laughs> However, this does not mean that everything the government says is wrong. When they tell me reading is fundamental, I'm inclined to agree. <laughs> what Stanton has presented to us is an unfalsifiable set of statements. If the government says there are aliens, that would mean there are aliens. If the government says there are no aliens, that would also mean there are aliens. <laughs> <laughs> the government was clearly involved in various spy programs, probably foreign and domestic, during the Cold War. I think an excellent explanation would be that the government is very bad at covering up its own spying. That seems to be a better way to explain the wealth of contradictory information we've seen. The data is there. When we have craft that can fly circles around our craft, or we have huge motherships half a mile long, the simplest explanation, we're dealing with alien intruders. That's the way the ball game goes on this planet at this time. We should pick the simplest explanation that accounts for all of the data. For instance, which recipe for soup is easier? One requiring chicken, noodles, and carrots, or one requiring just one ingredient, which is pixie dust? <laughs> pixie dust sounds a little simpler, but requires you to assume that it exists and that you know where to get it. <laughs> That's what the alien explanation is here. Sure, it's very brief. It's one word, aliens. All right, now we're really going to open the wild card here. So anybody in the audience who wants to ask a chance of uh, real live experts about possible real live aliens, <laughs> step right up here. Come aboard. Thank you. Here's my question. First of all, in the documentary, um, what was it called? Independence Day. <laughs> Will Smith. <laughs> Documentary? Will Smith punched out an alien. Are they, in fact, that weak? 
aliens don't seem to be showing tremendous strength. <laughs> Sorry. Well, thank you very much. It was thank a fascinating you. question. I obviously can't catch up on the 40 years of information collection that has gone into today's slideshow presentation. I'm certainly not going to argue that we've seen things we have no explanation for. I've got a lot of fuzzy pictures. You've got a lot of fuzzy pictures. I'm down with that. The simplest explanation is that those pictures can be explained as a combination of hoaxes, ignorance, and misperceiving ordinary events.